so I am going to make a race recap real quick of my most recent race in Palm Springs, Indian Wells, California. It was a half Ironman or 70.3 this past Sunday on December 5th. It was my fifth professional triathlon, second 70.3 and seventh triathlon to date. Um, I just want to try to document a little bit more of my training and race recaps. One, so I can look back and learn from in the future. And then maybe if anyone else is curious about how my race went in a little bit more of depth, they can watch this. So I'll start with uh, race morning and just work through uh, the swim, the bike, and the run and what I've got planned moving forward. I am in the process of driving to my parents' house right now. I had to go back up to UF for my girlfriend's birthday, which was yesterday. I had to pick up my road bike, and now I'm heading south, like I said, to pack, and I'm heading to Ecuador for my last race of the season on Sunday, which is a draft legal continental cup, and then I'll be in the off season. So, and it's also finals week at UF, so I don't have too much time to make a race recap video like super nice. So I figured I have nothing else to do besides drive for two hours right now. So turn on my camera or my iPhone and kind of just speak about my thoughts and experiences uh, with my most recent race and post it on YouTube for people to watch. So anyway. Uh, race morning, I woke up at uh, 4.15, race was at 7 a.m., plenty of time to get ready. Um, in the last few races I've done, early morning races at least, I have had a problem getting down food in the morning. I think that's because of nerves. Um, I just, I, I can't get down solid food in the morning. Um, I've never really had that problem, but right now, I mean, the last few months, it's, it's not been a big problem because I've, I've most of the races I've done are less than an hour so it's really not that important like to eat in the morning I don't think um, for a 50 minute race but for a four hour race uh, definitely it's important to get some carbs and calories and all that kind of fun stuff in the morning of the race so at Augusta uh, back in September which was my first 70.3 uh, I, again I had a really hard time getting getting food down solid food so this time I I went for a more liquid approach um, so I had a couple gels a couple um, energy chew gummy things um, I had a Red Bull uh, bottle of sports drink and yeah I tried to do a pop tart Italian carbs but I couldn't get it down unfortunately but I, I feel confident with what I took between the gels the Red Bull sports drink and the, the gummies that that was enough that was north of 700 calories um so i so i felt uh well prepared and um so yeah um swim swim was really cold it was uh water temperature was measured at 60.4 degrees fahrenheit so pretty brutally cold um is what i thought it actually it ended up i, I thought it was very comfortable and really refreshing once uh once you got in i warmed up for five minutes got acclimated to the water and uh, for the 25 minutes it took me to do the swim. Um, I, I didn't think it was all too bad. So Anyway, race started at 7 sharp. Um, it was an in-water start and I was I was pretty dead right in the center uh, We were treading water uh, gun went Honestly, it's probably the roughest start of my five pro races yet um, My head was above water probably for a hundred yards uh, moving forward just because there were so many bodies and legs and arms and people everywhere. Um, and again, I was just trying to move forward and there's just body after body. But after about uh, after about a minute, about a, like a hundred yards, um, things, things thinned out and I was able to find my stroke and try to, you know, go to good fuel for the water. Um, oh, forgot to mention, obviously I'm in a wetsuit. Um, so buoyancy wasn't an issue, just trying to move the arms, have a good kick going and um, like I said, move forward. So the nice thing about this course, it was it was pretty simple. It was a big rectangle for a for one thousand yards, and then a rectangle this way for a thousand yards. 
Uh, the first thousand was yellow buoys, and then it was very clearly marked at the halfway of the swim. The buoys turned orange, and they were actually numbered like one to twenty or whatever. So it was actually really nice um, swimming. It kind of had like a countdown of how long you had left, and it was like I said, clearly marked of halfway. So he just kept, you know, I just kept telling myself, you know, get to the orange buoys, and you know, you're on the home stretch. And, I got to the orange buoys, uh, which is a thousand yard, a thousand meters or whatever into the race. Uh, I was with the, the, the main chase pack with you know Lionel Sanders and uh, that big group of people that ended up swimming 24 high, 25 low uh, for the swim portion. And I was feeling good. I mean, uh, this the, the swim was definitely the highlight of my day. Uh, it was a career best swim. I felt the best I've ever felt in the water. Uh, I felt powerful. I felt. Uh, like a swimmer, I, I, just, I was moving forward and I felt good. Um, so, obviously, some of the some of the group swimming sessions I've done and the, some of the hot, higher yardage days I've done is you know paying off. Um, hopefully, I can continue that into the off season to, sh to show more, uh, to gain more progress and you know hit that chase pack, hit that front pack. Uh, hopefully, one day. Um, so, like I said, I was with that main pack of people um, through 1,000 yards or meters and after that honestly right pretty much immediately start i don't know if they accelerated or i just started slowing down my arms started to fatigue a little bit and uh, I, start, I i lost that pack um ended up swimming 25 50 so i lost that pack by about 50, 45 to 50 seconds depending on you know where they came out at and um but i, I was super happy with it i wanted to swim uh 27 minutes was my goal like i said it went 25 50 set me up great uh i heard from my um i heard from my uh girlfriend that i was 45 seconds down from lionel um so i figured that was pretty good got on the bike immediately started going to work um i wanted to hold anywhere you know no more than 350 watts to 330 watts for the two hour uh bike leg and uh you know, like I just, like I said, settled right into that 350 range and pretty quickly found myself in no man's land. I had left the people I came out of the water with, but then was behind, you know, the top 20. So I was kind of in a weird spot by myself, uh, which was fine because I was moving, moving fast. I knew I was making forward progress. Um, and I knew at 25 miles, there was a big turnaround and an aid station. So I knew I was going to be able to see uh, the front of the race and, you know, lap my Garmin and see where I was and um so right around I uh, saw so at 25 miles I I lapped it and saw where I was I was less than a minute behind uh, I think like Lieferman and the main pack of people um went through 28 miles which is halfway right a, a tick under an hour so I knew I was uh, I knew I was moving fast I knew the top guys like Lionel were gonna we're gonna bike too flat or a tick under it I think he went too flat 20 so I knew I was probably biking just as fast, holding that gap uh, right at the upper limit of my of my watts, but feeling good. Uh, so you know, it was like 345 watts through an uh, through you know, halfway, and um, then we kind of went to this racetrack section for 10k of the bike, and I, I could see through from all the turns that I was basically almost on the back end of that pack. Came out of the racetrack section saw my family they yelled at me told me what place i was in i think i was right right in the top 20 at the back end of that 200 yards right behind the, the big giraffe train if you want to call it that and um i knew i was about to catch them that was about 37 38 miles into the race probably i think 37 i had the goal of catching them sitting behind them refueling taking a gel drinking from my straw some sports drink and then uh collecting myself and just continuing my way to the front of the race or trying to catch the front of the race um i figured out pretty quickly once i hit the back of that pack i lapped my bike computer that we were moving pretty slow um and i was not pushing any watts um wanted to make a move but then there was i think 11 guys in that train and obviously it's non non drafting so 12 meters between each each person you're not allowed to slot in you're not allowed to be 
be less than 12 meters. Once you pass, you've got to pass. You've got to pass. You have, you have 25 seconds to pass each person in that train. And once you commit, you have to pass the whole train. You can't just pass one guy. You cut him off. I vaguely knew all of those rules, some better than others. Some rules I knew better than others, but I, I wasn't 100% sure. So I, again, I was at the back of that train. I tried to wave down a referee. Got uh, the referee came to me because there was two referees on motorcycles, just going back and forth, making sure everyone was following the rules. Uh, flagged him down, asked the question of, "Is it 25 seconds for one for each person? Is it 25 seconds for the whole train?" Um, they responded. I didn't hear them. They had a helmet on. There's people and the wind. It was hard. It was hard to hear. I wasn't able to understand what they said. So then I had to make a judgment call then. It was about 40 miles into the race. Am I gonna, am I gonna sit here? And, at the, and I knew eighth place was at the front of this pack. So, and I knew I could probably outrun everyone in this pack. So I was like, am I gonna play it safe? Get into the top eight and try, get, out, get into the top eight after the bike and then go to work on the run? Or am I gonna kind of, and top eight was my goal going into this race. Um, and or am i going to get a little risky try to pass the whole train of people continue my way to the front of the race and you know compete for the win or the podium or just get farther up the race um i decided if i wanted to to do that to pass the whole people all the people that it could have gone either great like i said i would have maybe caught the front of the race or i would have done it the, i would have done the passing incorrectly broken the rules and got served a five minute penalty so i decided i would pick the safer approach stay in the back of the pack i knew that i was going to be the safe approach i could have i would have easily been in the top eight rather than you know bike up to the top five or whatever but then get served a five minute penalty and then i finish in you know 15th place so pick the safer route those last 16 miles we averaged 24 miles per hour i pushed 280 watts i mean it was completely pedestrian um i was angry obviously um but didn't and i was so curious as to why we were biking so slowly um i went on to figure out probably figure out that uh when we got off when i got off the bike on the mount line uh about like four people went to the right to the penalty tent so i was like oh like they had penalties so obviously they're not going to bike hard their day's over so like they're not going to bike hard they don't care um so that kind of sucks but um now i know the rules um and I, i'll be able to execute the bike and the rules and the correct way and now i know if i catch the pack because i have 25 seconds per person to pass the whole pack i've got to pass the whole pack all at once and then get 25 meters in and just do my uh, 12 meters in and do my thing so hopefully that won't happen again and that comes with experience again it's only my second 70.3 so um i'm still trying to learn all the ins and outs of it um got off the bike um i felt good the only thing that was kind of a bother was my lower quads um which my lower quads started to get a little tight on the bike towards the end of it looking back after i kind of was thinking like hmm, i wonder why my quads are a little tight I'm almost 100% sure that the reason they were a little tight is because I was biking, I was, I was biking so hard, a pump full of adrenaline, pushing big watts down an arrow, just kind of in my own zone, you know, just trying to hit the front of the race that for the last 30 minutes of the bike, I, I biked so slowly that my adrenaline went down, my heart rate went down, I was on the hoods of the bike, I, I just, I kind of it was basically like a cool down um so my body i think is kind of tightened up and kind of got out of that like race mindset not race mindset but like race feel and so anyway i uh started so in the future obviously i won't do that but um so anyway got off the bike um and my friend zach told me i was in eighth place i was happy i said okay cool got my goal um, I'm gonna run intelligently now because I knew there were a couple good runners right behind me, such as Ari Clow, um, who I knew was gonna be running fast. And so I set out on a pace that I thought was 
uncomfortably hard but manageable. Um, it was a, and the course, the, the course was pretty difficult in my opinion. It was, it was hilly. It was very technical. It was some off-road sections. Um, so it, there was not a lot of flow to it. It was a lot like some of the miles were 510, some of the miles were 530. It was just, it was, and it was the same effort through the whole run. But um, again, it was just um, not a lot of flow to it. So completed the first, uh, it was two laps of six and a half miles, completed the first lap. And I think I was in seventh place. And then when I went to go enter the golf course for the second time, the last time, uh, Sophie, told me that I was in seventh place and that sixth place and fifth place are less than a minute up the road. So I said, okay, um, I just, like I said, I continued my pace, but also wanted to save a little bit because I knew once I, I caught those people, I didn't know if they were going to try to make a surge, try to drop me. I, I wasn't sure how much run they had left. So I was kind of trying to save a little bit of run so that you know when I got when I caught those people, if I caught those people, I had a run left to get uh, to give so I could you know challenge them. So ended up catching sixth place uh, with I think like three k to go, um, passed him pretty comfortably, and then came out of the golf course had less than a mile to go. Uh, Sophie told me that fifth place was literally right in front of me. Um, I said, okay, I collected myself, tried to control my breathing, get my legs under me. And, um, cause I knew, I knew this guy was pretty good. Um, and when I passed this person, I didn't want to just pass him. I wanted to accelerate past him to, you know, make it look like I had a lot of run left and make it stick. Um, cause there was only four minutes left in the race. Um, so passed him, put in a good surge, two minutes, right around like five minute pace. And then, uh, yeah, then just enjoyed the last minute or two of the race, knowing I was gonna get top five, uh, my second top five. I was really happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, crossed the line in three hours and 46 minutes, I think dead on. Uh, that consisted of a 25-50 swim. Again, career best swim, highlight of the day, set my day up fantastically. Um, and that just shows like, Having a good swim just it sets the rate, it sets the day and the race up so much nicer. You're not like I was still far behind, but I wasn't so far behind that I'm like, good lord. Um, and then split 206, uh, 30 on the bike. Again, that just shows you how much I slow down the last 17, 16 miles. Uh, if I split right under an hour for halfway. Um, yeah, I think the average power for the whole thing was 331. Um, and that was split up between, I think, like 345 for the first 92 minutes and then like uh, 280 something for the last 30 minutes. Um, so ha I was happy with it. I made some good aerodynamic changes to my outfit and some gear I've selected that helped me. There's still a lot I want to work on position-wise, uh, maybe get some shorter cranks, um, maybe raise the hands up on the arrow bars a little bit, um, just to just to get faster. I know, because my, watt, my watts are, are good, you know, I'm 165 pounds, I think. So 350 to 340, I think, is as much horsepower as I'm gonna need for the bike. Um, I think just moving forward, maybe some equipment choices, um, would be good and then just knowing the rules a little bit better and just gaining more experience and then the run uh this is my ran 109.50 really happy with that um and yeah so it was, it was good across all three i was elated to compete against some really strong people like lionel and vincent and ellie and chris lee for men um and andy potts and uh the gentleman from Denmark, who uh, finished right behind me. These are all people I really look up to, especially Lionel Sanders. Um, I was able to speak with him uh, briefly after the race. Um, that was very cool. <laughs> I got to, I asked him a couple questions, like his advice, um, you know, coming from behind, trying to pass big bike packs like that, what he recommends. Um, 
and definitely uh, tried to uh, absorb everything he told me uh, so that can set me up better for next time and then uh, he actually gave me a shout out at the awards later that evening which was super cool and uh, also got to speak to Vincent uh, Louis which was really cool got pictures of all of them so very awesome day I'm really happy with how everything went um, and now, like I said, last race of the season is this Sunday in Ecuador, Sprint Distance, Continental Cup. Hoping to have a strong performance there. I'm excited to see um, my swim progression over the Sprint Distance now because all of my training is, is based around uh, short course training. Um, so uh, I do a lot of speed work, especially across the, the run. Um, and I and a, a lot of high high end power stuff on the bike so um that's really kind of what i'm suited for right now um it's, again that's what my training has been focused on so i'm really excited to see how that executes on sunday and then just enjoying a good little off season and uh trying to attack the swim as the main focus and priority of that off season and then to have my first uh full 12 month season as a professional um and seeing what I can accomplish across the 70.3 and short course uh, circuit. So yeah, I'm really happy with how things have gone. Um, thanks for following along and uh, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for listening if you did. If you have any questions, let me know and yeah.